on Instagram or kind of purposely put myself away from it because I just want to stick to doing what I'm doing at the moment. Doesn't mean I've deleted it off my app or anything or dis disabled my account. I think that's usually a sign of somebody that doesn't have any willpower. And again, I'm somebody that is quite strong minded. I've got a lot of willpower. I'm very driven in the things that I do so I can leave it alone without touching it and getting excited so that's been fine but anyway i missed out on some news courtesy of instagram because it looks like it's possession the uh paris-based um techno party has now decided to do a london edition of the party in e1 of all places and i think you guys have maybe heard me mention e1 a few times on here because it's been one of the quite i think it's been one of the successes of the pandemic sort of raving era um it's a place that i kind of really didn't wasn't really the biggest fan of mostly because of the crowd but i feel like within the pandemic era they've kind of changed up their programming and made it a little bit more varied it's not just all edm and it's not just all tech house and it's not just all you know uh, melodic house right it's a little bit different and now they're obviously introducing this type of music obviously they had um budokai on i think a couple of weeks ago a few months ago i forgot when it was on so they're clearly trying to diversify their um, event bookings. It's a little bit schizo. So, you know, you never know what you're going to get when you go there. But I think if you check the listings ahead of time and you kind of make sure you like the kind of music they're playing, you should be OK. But it can be a little bit schizo, especially when they do different rooms. Sometimes the main room and the other room is completely different vibe from who's, you know, there's nothing really tying people together or tying the music together apart from people just getting on it and having a good time. But Possession, again, was one of the other, I thought, victors from the pandemic, I think, because if I'm not mistaken, one of their first parties maybe came, no, the first party that I saw on Boiler Room maybe happened just before the pandemic, right? If I'm not mistaken, around maybe Novemberish time. And um, when we were obviously locked down and they were still kind of open over there in, in Paris or in France, they had the ability to put on these parties. And then we got to see all these clips online of these amazing crazy flipping parties outdoors in it because i think at the time you couldn't do, do parties indoors because of, the, of covid and all this sort of stuff so they kind of obviously uh, improvised and decided to do gatherings outdoors technically in an open air space and they looked amazing they kind of reminded you of old school videos of like love family park and shit right you remember those videos back in the day on youtube that you'd watch and stuff with like thousands of people in you know high off ecstasy smiling topless looking fabulous and dancing just absolutely dance that's what the one thing you remember from those love family park videos everyone's obviously got you know pupils the size of cds i mean pupils the size of cds sorry but the one thing you do notice which is a complete contrast to nowadays clubbing is that people are actually having a good time and i think we were kind of reminded of that fact when we saw the possession party videos right we thought oh my god this looks absolutely amazing These people are actually raving they're actually raving and the one thing that actually made you think even more so was the um, first video I remember seeing from them via Boiler Room when they did that party. I don't know if it was here. I'm pretty sure it was in Paris. I don't think it was here. It was, it was in Paris. Oh, yeah, I was right. It was November. So it was around the time, just a few months before I went to Berlin, because I went to Berlin just before the lockdown happened, which is when I kind of realized, okay, this is serious, because I remember going to Berlin in February of 2020 and it being pretty dead. And I was like, oh, it's the first time I've ever been to you know of course i don't live there so i'm only visiting there but the times i visit it's always busy so to go to that sort of club and it'd be half empty it was a bit weird i was like oh it's the first time i remember saying to myself this is the first time ever i've been able to like stand at the back and i was able to see straight through and see the dj booth before when i've been there either maybe i was too high or too drunk but before i've been there right i was standing at the back and you legitimately couldn't see where the dj was you just see people throbbing and dancing and having a good time but you couldn't see them there's no way because obviously they don't shine a light on them anyway it's quite different how they do things but you just couldn't see you had to kind of really go through people and cut through and be like excuse me excuse me excuse me to see anything so that was when i kind of realized but this video and again the subsequent videos from possession i think was what put them on the map and let people think okay let people know these guys are doing things properly really really properly like they've got you know djs we hadn't heard of or djs that weren't popular maybe on this side of town um they had clearly people that were there for the music and not just there to pose and record videos like all those circle local crowds and shit that we always kind of see on the timeline it was just a, it was just like a refresh it was like it's not to say nothing's good or bad now, let's just be honest the circle local shit is rubbish isn't it right you're seeing all these people just standing up with their screens recording fucking another martinez brother set that's exactly the same as the other set that they've seen online so it's not even like you're recording anything special again no slash to those guys because they're ogs and shit but come on like you do you really need to record another seth chocolate set on your flipping phone you don't really um if, and anything i'd imagine those kind of people would want you to just enjoy the music just close your eyes enjoy the music you know take off your fedora and your fucking glasses and just have a good time 
you know, take off your glasses. Don't you? All right, Nick. But anyway, let's just play the video of the possession part in Paris and then I'll continue. So my computer is going a bit mad because obviously it's not the best in the world. But let's just pause it there for now. But obviously positions, like I said, where they were one of the victors, I think, from the lockdown. Because I think people realized, oh, wow, um, you know, those sort of clubs that we see from those old school videos and documentaries, they actually still exist or that kind of scene still exists in it. And it was a big deal. And obviously um, people have kind of, you know, become big fans of them. They've obviously expanded and done raves in other places. They've done them all over Paris or well, mostly outside of the outside of the main city centre on the outskirts. Maybe places where they can kind of run things a bit and mock and run things a little bit more DIY and make the music the volume a little bit louder. And now they decided obviously to do a party here in E one. The lineup features obviously nine and nine dead live. They've got Charlie Sparks, they've got Kla, they've got Lucine, Parfait randomer obviously big fan of him seen him a couple times here in london i think at the cause and maybe mixed garage previously what it was called now it's called obviously the color factory but he played there one time somewhere i haven't seen i think that's a tall dutch guy and someone called trim who i don't know so that should be a flipping amazing amazing night really 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 going to be an amazing night and um like i said the e1's maybe one of my favorite venues here in london because obviously it's kind of near where i live i can get there in like half an hour or so so it's not too shabby and the uber ride back home isn't too bad the security guards are a little bit handy in the beginning you have to kind of go through the same sort of shit you have to go through in other places you know empty your pockets go through scanner blah 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 but once you're in there they tend to leave you alone if you get what i mean it's like completely different from the vibe you get in that fabric whereas you know they're kind of outside and they're inside because they've got their flashlights on and they're moving. But as I think, from what I've seen so far when I went to E1, they tend to not be so aggressive with the flashlights on the dance floor. And they tend to kind of, they're still there, you know, you, you know security is there, but they tend to kind of just patrol and make sure no one's going crazy or, you know, ODing on ketamine or anything. So that's fairly okay. And um, like I said, um, I'm just a big fan of how they put parties together. I'm a big fan of the people they book. Um, they seem to kind of get it. And for whatever reason, you know, Maybe it's the way they started and the videos they put out. But from what I've seen so far, the crowds seem to always be up for having a good time. And I don't know how you kind of perfect that again. From being a promoter myself, I know how difficult it is to kind of get people to go out to your event in the first place. Even if you're not charging, it's hard to get people to leave. The fact that they charge all their events and all their events are charged, you know, they're not £10 tickets. They're usually €20 Euros plus or something. I think even this one that I purchased a ticket for, you had to purchase two tickets. You couldn't purchase one. So it came up to about, I don't know, nearly €30 Euros or something along that line. So it's not cheap. But for whatever reason, people still pay to tickets to go and they always go with the right attitude they go to dance they go to have a good time they obviously they're going to come kind of pose a bit because obviously there's like you loads of young hot skinny looking people i just saw in the flipping video you don't really see any flipping gigantos like myself in there and it like i mean old men in the corner which i'm going to be when i go to this one but it's good to see man it really is and i think that's the other kind of benefit because i said before in position i think are the are one of the only winners from the pandemic because again you know we were all locked in at home we all kind of we didn't have places to go and then we saw these videos of these crazy french people dancing in these derelict you know uh spaces and areas the other good thing i think could come from it too especially off the back of possession it felt like there was a reintroduction or the reawakening of the club kids spirit at the, in clubs it felt like because I think maybe it's a consequence maybe it's just all coincidental but it felt like to me because we all weren't able to go out the moment clubs were opened or the moment we could go to like an illegal party people wanted to make an event of it they wanted to make it a, a thing it wasn't just turning up to somewhere in a hoodie so they would go out buy a particular outfit maybe edit an outfit maybe cut and paste stitch this cut that blah 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 paint your face 
and go out and actually make it an event right so it kind of reminded me of the old soho days back in the days right in like the early 2000s where people would actually go out and be an actual club kid like put on a wacky outfit and just go loose or just kind of make a, an entirely new persona for yourself and just kind of go incognito and just have a good time and i think that's been again a consequence of the lockdown because we're not taking the parties for granted anymore so if you're going out and you're going to risk your health and you're going to maybe risk the health of people around you at least you want to go out with a bank you know what i mean you want to go out and if you're going to kind of you know die off the back of this rave at least you're going to die fabulous and raving your face off and snorting a bunch of stuff do you know what i mean that's what maybe i feel like it happened as well so really looking forward to it um i think it, i forgot to say the date but e1 london possession 18th of february so i'm gonna be there sweating my face off glasses on with a bottle of water so if you're gonna be around definitely let me know and if you're there say hi because it's definitely gonna be a good night i definitely uh, definitely think so um it's gonna be one of those ones where you know probably gonna go from the beginning all the way to the end pace yourself if you can and like i said you know e1's a great venue the sound i think is really good especially in the main room um definitely one of my favorite places to go easy to get to um easy connections to leave there's a mcdonald's that's 24 hour one around the corner like it's a fairly decent place i think there's a couple of offices around the areas too if you want to carry if you want to get a couple of beers on the way there um decent i'm not gonna lie decent and so far they've made some great changes in terms of their booking so clearly they are trying to diversify the crowd and make it a little more interesting so it should be a good night i'm really looking forward to it and hopefully you know we don't get any crazy variants between now and then so hopefully fingers crossed it happens but yeah possessions e1 no possessions possession happening at e1 london 18th of february and you know check it out check it out check it out